Hello, and welcome to the installation video for Collaborative Platform version 7. My name is Ricardo Dominguez, and this is the fall semester of 2015. Okay, so let's begin. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go through all the programs that you're going to need in order to install and run Collaborative Platform on your local system. The first thing that we need is an IDE. Since most of the backend is done on PHP, as you can see here, the current IDE that I decided to go with, as per the suggestions from the people that worked on this in the summer, is PHP Storm. Now there's different IDEs that you could use. You could go with NetBeans, or you could go with Oracle, or really any other one. However, this one just seemed really user-friendly and it's really just a matter of personal preference. So you can actually just go to the PHP Storm website, download it. Um, PHP Storm normally isn't free. However, if you are a student, then you can sign up with your student email and it'll be free for you for as long as you want. Um, PHP Storm is just, it's really, really appealing. You know, it's it's got a good uh, scheme to it. it. It's got an autocomplete. Um, it's just, it's, it's overall nice. I definitely recommend this IDE over the other ones. Um, the next thing that we're going to go over is XAMPP. So XAMPP pretty much installs a server on your local machine. Now, all you would do is just go to the main XAMPP website, download it here. They have a version. Ah, they have a version for Windows, Linux, and Mac. So your operating system is, as long as it's one of those three, you should be okay. Um, once you download it and you get it installed, really, all you need to do is just, you know, you'll get this window, and then it'll automatic. It'll it will it will automatically come with an Apache server and a MySQL server. Um, there is sometimes a problem for some reason if you try and start the the servers and your Skype is online, then it won't start the servers because Skype uses the same port. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to quit Skype. And then after you quit Skype, you should be able to start the servers just fine. After this comes Source Tree. Okay, so before we go into Source Tree, you're going to probably have already registered to the GitHub, the Collaborative Platform GitHub. This is what it looks like. Now, you can push, commit, pull, all from the command prompt, however it is that you're more comfortable. Uh, for this iteration and for previous iterations, we've used Source Tree just because it's got a, a really friendly user interface. So as you can see, I have my collaborative platform here. And depend, depending on which folder I want to set my directory to, it will constantly check the folder and tell you, hey, you made a change uh, here. There is an unstaged change. Make sure you commit it. So for example, I'm going to commit this one right now. So I click it. It All the green is all the new stuff that was added. This is actually the, uh, the database import that you're going to be using during your semester. So what you're going to do with this is let's say you go to commit 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 here and then you say um, database import for coplat version 7 you choose commit it's gonna commit the changes and now you're gonna see that you're ready to push the changes onto the development branch. So you click push, it'll tell you where you want to push it. I always push it to both because why not? And then click OK. And that's it. You're good. You have successfully you have successfully 
push something onto the GitHub repository. So as you can see, it's just it's really nice to use, really easy to use. If this is your first time using it, then what you're going to want to do is you're probably going to have already, after you downloaded it, signed in using your credentials for GitHub. So you're going to want to go to Clone and then New. So here it tells you the the path of the URL. So you click on this button and it'll show you, you know, a list of all the repositories that have to do a senior project. Of course, you're going to do collaborative platform here like this. And it'll tell you the destination path. Where do you want this? And it'll tell you, uh, you know, it'll give you other options that you can use. After that, you put clone and then it would clone the repository. It would actually show up right here under under this one, and it would look exactly like this one. So now, after you pull the repository, after you clone the repository, it's going to look something like this. What you're going to want to do, or what is suggested rather, is let's go to documents, let's see collaborative platform right here. So what you're going to want to do is this is your GitHub repository right now, or at least it's mine. You're going to want to go ahead and go to code, go to website, and then copy this and put it somewhere else so that whatever changes you do on your day to day uh, don't affect the GitHub repository. And then once you're done making all those changes, you can just overwrite the files in here and then source tree will pick it up and then you can push it just fine. Or if you'd rather just, you know, uh, code it in here, then that's fine too. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a copy of this regardless. Um, whenever you install XAMPP, it's always going to have to be in the base directory of C, or it could be H, whatever, Y, it doesn't matter. It just has to be like on the root. It can't be in Windows or in users, it has to be right here. You're going to open up XAMPP, and then XAMPP reads all its things from this right here, uh, htdocs. You're going to want to paste it on here, and that way when you go to we go online here. You go to localhost. See, it'll say localhost and then it reads coplat and then index.php. So, as you can see, it runs the project perfectly. It's really easy to set up. You're not going to have any problems with it. Um, the same is going to go for PHP Storm. You can either open the, the GitHub one, or you can open the one in, in XAMPP, that's the one I have open, and then just edit it from there and copy the changes over. Um, it's actually recommended that you just set up the one in XAMPP, and then, like I said, copy the changes over to the one in, in my documents. Another thing you could do, I guess, is just make the, the repository point to the XAMPP server, but, I mean, that's 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 up to you. From here, you're going to want to, let's go back to documents and go to collaborative platform. From here, you're going to want to go to code, website, and then it's coplat, protected, config, and then main.php. Looks like this. You're going to want to go to connection string. Not that one, this one. You're going to want to go to connection string. Um, since you're going to be using your local host, you want this right here, like it has the password right now. But you want this right here to be blank. Because it's your local host, you're not going to use a password for it. So make sure that's one of the first changes that you make, that that's blank. Next up, we're going to look at MySQL Workbench. So MySQL Workbench, 
this is a tool so that you can manipulate, you know, your your tables, run, qu run queries, all that good stuff. Um, it's really nice to use. Um, it's something that it's really easy to pick up. If you're more comfortable with PHP My Admin, you can use that too. I just like this one because the editor, you know, it's it's nicer, it's color coded, it has autocomplete, and it's just nice overall to use. Also, the good thing about this is that you can have several connections. So, for example, let's go to my local instance. Um, as you can see, you would just need the local, the the host name, the port. The username and then the password is just blank like we said previously uh, in order to add a new connection you go on to the little plus sign here and then again it's just the host name port root so if I were to do this right now then it would give me another connection to my local host you can have one for the production server you can have one for the development database and then from there you would just use your um, so here there you would just use the uh, standard TCP IP over SSH then you have the host name, the username for that. It's going to ask you for the password, uh, for your SSH password. So you're going to give it that. And then the MySQL host name. On that, it's going to be localhost, the port that it's on, then the username, and then the password for that. It's not going to be blank. It's actually going to be uh, the password that would be in your auto backend file on in Coplat. So that's pretty much it. Good stuff. Okay, so let's say you're completely new to all this, right? And you want to import the database because you're just starting your project and you need a database, right? So you would go to, once you download all this, you go to create schema and then you name your schema whatever you want. So let's go Coplat2 or Coplat, let's go Coplat show. Right, then you apply. It's gonna give you this. You finish. And then it's gonna show up right here. Now, as you can see, there's no tables or anything. It's completely empty. So what you're gonna want to do is you're going to double click this to make sure that this is the the current default. You're going to want to go over to this button that says uh, "Open up a database query." Right. So this is actually the file you're gonna open, but I'll I'll show you how to get it. So I actually had this set up somewhere previously, but now it's in Documents and Collaborative Platform, Code, Database. And then as you can see, these are the ones for all the previous one. Uh, the one for Fall 2015 is this one right here. You're going to open it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to open this. See, this is a huge block of code. This is just going to import everything. You're going to click on this little lightning bolt, and off it goes. Wait for it to do its thing down here. Once it's done, now you're going to, and this is very important, you're going to want to click refresh all. And boom, you have all the tables here. All you have to do is just, you know, point the, the project over to this, and that's it. So as you can see, this uh, this is one of the newer features so if you select all the rows it'll give you all the information and you're good to go if you're at the end of your semester and let's say you've edited so here let's drop this schema first if you're at the end of the semester and let's say you've edited uh, put in some new tables taken away some tables what have you you're going to want to upload this so the way you're going to do it is you're going to double click this and go to server data export and then click on the one that you want and then remember to click export to self-contained file that's what i did it'll tell you where do you want it what's the name that you want it under so yours would be coplad version 8 i guess you put it wherever you want it's gonna once you compile it it's gonna look something like this and then that's it Next up, we're going to be looking at star UML. Star UML is something that you use, uh, maybe if you took software engineering, to create all of the sequence diagrams, the main model. It's really easy to use. Um, there's a bunch of tutorials online, like really simple YouTube tutorials that you can, that'll show you how to 
create this stuff, but once you get the hang of it, it's really easy. Um, from here, you can, after you've saved everything, you can export it as JPEGs, PNGs. So this is what you would use for that. Um, now let's go into PHP unit. So PHP unit is something that I started working with in the semester of fall 2015. Essentially, if you want to install it, um, it might already be installed with uh, PHP Storm. I know it. you can install it as a plugin, but I didn't do that. I did it as a FAR file. So the way you're going to do it is you're going to go to PHP unit. You're going to download the current stable release, right? And then as you can see here, it's going to download a PHAR file, FAR file. So then from then, after you're done with that, you're going to go on to PHP Storm. And I have my FAR file under the tests directory. In order to get your FAR file there, uh, what you would have to do is you have to go to File, Settings. So you're going to go to Languages and Frameworks. Languages and Frameworks go to PHP. Now there's several ways you can do this. I the way I have it set up now is that it uses uh, something called an auto load uh, because whenever you go to your XAMPP folder, uh, whenever you download XAMPP, for example, let's say go to XAMPP, right? And then from here you go to PHP, and then from PHP you go to, it actually comes with all this, it comes with pair, and then pair actually comes with PHP unit. So all you really have to do is just, in order to load it, since it comes with XAMPP, it's just make sure that this points to the auto load here, right there, and then um, set your default configuration file to the PHP unit.xml that's under Coplad protected tests PHP unit XML. So it would be this right here. And then the bootstrap file to the bootstrap that comes, that is in, in tests. So this one right here. And then that's it. That's all you need to do. Uh, after you click OK, you'll all you have to do is uh, create a PHP class that extends C test case or CDB test case. And then from there, you can see all the PHP unit commands. Another way to do this would be, uh, since we downloaded the FAR file, it's just you point to the FAR file. You know, it's essentially the same thing. Um, you make sure your configuration file is PHP unit, your bootstrap file is your bootstrap file under protected tests, and it'll be good to go. It's, I just, I, I'm using this method because since XAMPP already came with it, then, you know, but it's good to have options. So, what we're going to go into finally is uh, the functionality testing. So, the functionality testing that we were using is Selenium IDE. So let's see. I mean, all you would need to do is just, you know, open up Firefox and then type in Selenium IDE. It's a plugin. You can download it. Once it's downloaded, your Firefox is, I think it restarts. And then it'll show up here, Selenium IDE. All you have to do is click it and that's it. It's good to go from there. The last thing I wanted to talk about was uh, something that I didn't set up, but was set up during the summer semester. And it's uh, a cron job. So what the cron job does is that it automatically checks emails every 30 minutes for like mentor to make sure that no mentors, no new mentors are away or anything like that. So the way you do this is you go into your, you know, to putty, you log into the development site and the development site and the production site should have a cron job running. Uh, the way you can check to see that is with sudo cron tab l or dash l. Um, if there is no cron tab running, cron job running, it'll say no cron tab for root. If there is, then something like this will appear. Really simple. If there is no, if nothing's running, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cd to this location, then type in in that location. There will be a bunch of cron jobs. Uh, the one that we're currently using is crowjob30, so you're going to want to do this. If you want to change the interval, like if you don't want it to be 30 minutes but instead 10 minutes, then you open it up with an editor, 
and uh, there's going to be a line like this, like the first line, and then you change this number here to whatever you want. From there, uh, if you're using Vi, you're going to hit escape, then type in this command, this writes it, this quits, and you're done. So let's say you're moving to a new server, you're moving to some new development or some new production server. What you're going to want to do is install Postfix first. So you're going to type in this command. Uh, there are cases where I have needed to contact the administrator over at CIS to open up port 25 because that's the, uh, the port that Postfix uses. You're going to change to this location, uh, type in this command, and type in this one. Um, this will reload Postfix. Uh, from there, you're going to create a, a user, you know, FIU Coplat or FIU Coplat Dev, whatever you want. You're going to add a password. You're going to put in the password twice. If you have the like a GitHub repository on that server and it's using one of the previous versions of the Coplat PHP projects, then what you're going to want to do is find all the instances of this and change it to whatever your server is. So for example, the um, development server is cpdev, when you connect through SSH, is cpdev.cis.fiu.edu. If your new server is just cp, um, I don't know, or like cp prod production or something, then you're going to want to change this to whatever the name of your server is. And then from there, everything should work just fine. So that concludes the installation guide for Collaborative Platform version 7. Uh, these were all the tools that I used. After you've gone through this, you should be able to at least pick up from where fall 2015 semester left off. Thank you very much for watching.